This is me just three years ago, new to property investing, bouncing around between different property strategies and trying to figure out which area to invest in. Taking that first step in property can be the most difficult part. And then when you do start, you don't always have the right support. I often had comments such as, don't buy property now because Brexit is going to tank the property market. And don't you think that investing in property is a bit risky? So when I purchased that very first property, rented it out and I started making profit every single month, I was over the moon that I'd proved everyone wrong. But even though I succeeded and overcame that initial hurdle, property investing is still a continuous mental battle. Whether it's the risk involved in property, the regular feeling of uncomfort, not having enough money at times, or not getting the right support from others, it can be a really tough thing. And that's why I'm making this video, because I wish I had something like this when I started out. And I believe that if you follow these five steps, it'll help you focus your attention quicker and make more progress than other people starting out in property. So what are the five steps? Step number one is to build up your capital. Now, this is rich coming from me because I started property with under 20,000 pounds of capital and I went for it anyway. Ever since then, I've had to be very resourceful when building up my portfolio. But if I was to start from scratch, I would have spent more time in that initial phase building up my capital, whether that was from saving money, doubling down on a business, sourcing properties earlier, flipping properties, or some alternative strategy that was low in capital outlay, but high in returns, which is easier said than done. So why would I have taken this approach? Well, because the more money you start with or have access to, the more options and higher leverage opportunities that you have available to you. Putting this in the most simple form, someone starting with 30,000 pounds has to make more precise and more cautious decisions. And they have to move slower in order to preserve as much capital as possible along the way. Whereas someone with 200,000 pounds can make quicker decisions and take on more opportunities at once. And this is often why experienced investors with large amounts of capital employ the buy one, flip one strategy, where they purchase two or multiple properties at once. They will hold one, so probably do the, the BRR strategy and hold it after the refinance, and then they will flip one in order to replenish the capital used to purchase the first BRR. Being able to strategically deploy capital and work on multiple properties at once means an investor can seize opportunities and grow a portfolio much, much quicker. Number two is to choose a strategy. One of the most common conversations I've had over the last few years with new investors is that they can't focus or hone in on just one strategy. This is also known as the shiny penny syndrome. An investor thinks about buy to let, then either gets distracted or frustrated, moves on to service accommodation, same process, repeat, over to HMOs, over to flips, over to commercial, and then finds himself all the way back at the beginning at buy to let. Now, if this is you, do not panic. It happens to all of us, and there is a solution for it. Choosing your strategy should be led by two main factors, the capital that you have available, which we've just discussed, and your availability of time. Capital, because a small amount of capital might mean that you have to focus in on a strategy like sourcing in order to build up more capital, or it could mean a turnkey buy to let if you have some capital, but not enough to go and purchase and do a refurbishment of a house. Whereas if you have a large amount of capital, you might explore flips, HMOs or conversions. So when we look at time, this is because there is no point choosing a strategy which absorbs up a lot of your time if you already have to commit to a full-time job, a family, busy lifestyle and hobbies. If you're a busy person, you need a strategy which is more hands-off and requires less time commitment. Busy people tend to lean into single let, buy to lets, as they are the most hands-off strategy, especially when compared to you know, short-term holiday lets or trying to source properties. So either draw a table on a piece of paper so that you can compare your time and your money situation, or use the pyramid shown on screen now which shows you the different levels of strategy depending on the capital, experience, and time that you have and what is required. It's not entirely accurate because sourcing and rent to rent require the least capital and experience, but do not always require the least amount of time. But use this to choose your strategy and get a very, very clear route that you want to take 
and why you want to take it. Step number three is to choose cash flow or to choose capital growth. Now, there are many properties and areas that provide both cash flow and good capital growth potential. However, I urge you to pick just one and make this your main focus, whether that is cash flow because your plan is to replace your income from property, or whether that's capital growth because you want to increase your overall net worth and equity. There is no right answer in property as cash flow is very important for earning regular money and getting us through the tougher times in higher interest rates, but also capital growth is more important as this is often where the true wealth is built in property. The large gains and jumps in net worth come from equity built up over a longer period of time. But regardless of which one you choose, your decision will impact the route you take. Right now, due to the constant changes in interest rates, the majority of buy-to-let strategies have seen a massive impact in cash flow but some more than others. A good example of this is the buy, refurbish, refinance strategy. In previous years, we've seen big ROI percentages and reasonable cash flow using this strategy. However, this has been massively, massively impacted. This is due to the fact that with the BRR strategy, our goal is to push up the end value as high as possible, which is great because it means we can pull more of our money out of the deal, more of our capital out, but it unfortunately means having a high interest rate on a high amount of debt. And this entail means a larger monthly interest payment to your mortgage provider, meaning that properties profit far less each month. Many, many BRR properties I've seen will now only cash flow only 150 to 200 pounds per month profit after the refinance on these current interest rates. Compare that with purchasing a good turnkey buy to let renting it out and collecting your monthly payment, and the outlook is quite different. This is because we have just added debt to the 75% of the purchase price, and we have not leveraged too high. The monthly payment is now lower, and the property cash flow is better. The saving grace with interest rates honestly has been the increases in rents and most good turnkey properties should still cash flow 240 to 250 profit per month. And now that I have explained these two examples, you can see why it's important to choose between cash flow and capital growth. Step number four is to find an area to invest in. Sounds simple, right? But I see so many investors get stuck at this point in their property investment journey. Most investors go through the same process at the start. They say, can I invest within 30 minutes of where I live? And for many of us, that option is too expensive or not worthwhile. So we start to look further afield. As we aren't always familiar on the areas we are looking to invest in, whether that is the Northeast, the Northwest, Yorkshire, South Wales, or any other areas, a lot of us tend to spend a considerable amount of time choosing an area, which makes sense as it's a large decision to make and it can actually impact the next five to 20 years of your investment journey. However, this is also where a lot of investors get stuck as they can't make a decision or they continuously change their mind on where to invest. My advice for getting past this, Take your four or five shortlisted areas and then rapidly narrow them down to two or three. So shortlist them down to two or three areas. Then, wait for it, some groundbreaking advice here. Go and visit those areas. Book a long weekend, a trip, a hotel, and just visit the area. Don't overbook your diary with viewings. Just book in a few viewings. Book a nice evening out and then spend lots of time learning the different areas. Then rank these areas against one another into the following categories. Number one, fundamentals. So the infrastructure of the city, the companies that are based there, the amenities and, and so on. Number two is the transport links. So airports, trains and connections to other cities. Number three is the investment and construction in the area because the more that is going on, the more money invested into an area, the more likely it is to grow in the future. Then it's the general feeling of safety whilst you're there as this is of course important. And lastly, the profile of the individuals living within that area as they are likely to be your tenants and they're kind of the fundamentals and the different things you should compare and of course on top of that you need to do your deal analysis do the numbers work in this area purchase price versus the rental price you know the capital versus the profit and that gives you the roi is there enough scope to do flips or buy refurbished refinance and use those tools to help you 
choose an area which is most suitable for you. Now, step number five, just get started. Now, why is this important? Well, it's for accountability. If I had a pound for the amount of people that have said to me over the years, the following statements, you know, I thought about purchasing a property 10 years ago. Wish I had now, look at the prices. Or I was gonna invest in property, but life got in the way. So how can you avoid this happening to you? Get accountable in some shape or form. And to get started, you can actually hold yourself accountable by just opening a limited company, setting up a bank account, speaking with an accountant, as these are actual physical steps that you can start taking today and that will commit you to taking your journey seriously. I really like the quote, commitment is an act, not a word. So you actually have to go out and do something. Another thing you can do is join a community of investors or a network or even attend property events. You need to get yourself in an environment that allows you to see other people achieving goals in property. And this in turn will trigger your competitive nature. It will hold you accountable to your own goals and it will help expand your mind to see other people achieving goals within property. And that concludes the five steps to help you getting started, to focus your attention quicker and make more progress than other people starting out in property. Remember to take action today and I will see you in the next video.